The quest to master your finances can be a daunting journey. And today I'm gonna to walk through exactly what I would do if I was starting over. I had never considered my personal finances before and I only had what I know today. Now this is a great place to start as we move into 2024, the new year's coming and getting your personal finances in order is a great new year's resolution and it will serve you for the rest of your life. But before we start, I wanna ask you an important question. What does financial success look like to you? Because it's different for everyone and I think it goes without saying, but it's impossible to know if you're financially successful, if we haven't given financial success a definition. For some, that's gonna look like living debt free. For others, it might be reaching financial independence and retiring early. And then for some others, it could be buying a new car. I know I want a Tesla personally. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take out a piece of paper and you're gonna write down all the things that you want and what they mean to you. For me, just to serve as an example, it's a house with a home office because I like to work from home. It's a fenced-in backyard for my dog. It's a two-car garage because I have a garage now and I never ever want to go back to parking in the cold. It's a vacation or two every year and the ability to work from my own schedule. And finally, it's the ability to retire my fiance and then give myself the ability to follow suit a few years later. At some point, we'll circle back and put a price on all of these items because that's what we want to achieve, and that's the roadmap for getting to where we wanna go. Now, seriously, take out a piece of paper, write it down. That's step number one. Now, the rest of this list is relatively simple. The first thing we need to focus on if we wanna get our personal finances in order is spending less than we earn. After we do that, we're gonna focus on increasing our income or earning more money, and then the final step is going to be investing wisely. If we can do these three things, then our personal finances are slowly gonna be moving in the right direction. Let's take a second and walk through these a little bit more in depth. First is spending less than you earn, and that sounds easy, right? Well, it is until you start getting into all of the details. And it's really easy to get overwhelmed when you start looking at your expenses. And a lot of people will say you need to start with a budget, but I actually don't agree. I think the first step is just tracking your spending, that's it. You don't need to budget everything out. You don't need to say, hey, I'm gonna spend X, Y, Z. All you need to do is understand what you're spending. This will make it very obvious where you're spending on things you don't care about and where you're spending on things that make you happy. One thing that I do wanna note is you can do this in Excel, you can do this in Google Sheets, but you can also just download an app like Rocket Money or Mint, well, Mint just died, but something like that Every dollar is a good one, and it'll automatically load your transactions in. I, I like doing stuff like this because you want it to be as easy as possible to understand where you're spending money and what you're spending your money on. Now, there's a saying called what gets measured gets managed, and once you start managing it, you'll subconsciously start being more careful with your spending. This goes without saying, but if you're in consumer debt, think credit cards or auto loans or personal loans, payday loans, all that stuff, then your expenses are gonna naturally be inflated because you're gonna be paying a lot of money on interest. And because you're paying money on interest, you're not able to use that money for stuff that you care about. Now, when you start tracking your expenses, it's gonna be very obvious how bad consumer debt is and why it's horrible. Now, the second item we talked about in the beginning was increasing our income. That's right, we want to make more money. Sounds easy, just make more money. The truth is you can only cut your expenses so much. Theoretically, you can earn an infinite amount of money. There's people out there with billions of dollars, millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and that scales. Now, there are a handful of ways you can earn more money, but I'm gonna keep it as simple as possible for the purposes of this video. So here they are. Number one, you can ask for a raise. You just get more money doing it, whatever it is you already do. Number two, you can work longer hours. If you make $20 an hour, you work twice as many hours, you double your income. Or number three, you can start a business on the side. This is the most effort, but also has the highest possible gain. Asking for a raise is the easiest because you're gonna earn more money for doing the same stuff you already do, like I said before. And it might only take 30 minutes to have that conversation with your boss. And I, I've seen people do this, I've done it myself, and people earn anywhere from $5,000 more a year to $20,000 more a year, and they literally just do the same exact work. There's no overhead. It's one 30-minute conversation. Think about that. One conversation, 
could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of your career, especially if you keep having that conversation year after year after year and you get really good at negotiating your salary so you're at the top end instead of the bottom end of the range for your job. The second item we can talk about is working longer hours. This, I'm gonna be honest, is brutal. But I know a few guys who are out there working a lot of hours and they're getting overtime pay. So they go from making whatever it is, $30 an hour to time and a half, which is like $45 an hour, and they could be working 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. They're gonna do that for a few years and then they're gonna have a huge nest egg and be able to retire in their mid thirties because they didn't go to school and take on school debt and do all that stuff. They just went into the trades, they work a ton of overtime and they're making a lot of money. It's some suffering now for a lot of relaxing later and that's the trade off you need to think about. Now the final one we talked about is starting a side hustle. That could be a YouTube channel like this one, it could be an Instagram account or Twitter or maybe you're baking cookies on the side or making tea or candles or whatever it is that excites you. Personally, I stick to side hustles with little to no startup cost. In the past, I've tried some with high startup costs and it's been a great way to lose a lot of money and be really frustrated. It's only a business if it's making money. It's a side hustle if it's making money. If it's losing money, it's a hobby. You're gonna hear people say this all the time. It's the truth. So the lower the startup cost, the lower the barrier of entry, the better. Now that's enough about side hustles because at this point you're managing your expenses, you're boosting your income, and hopefully that means that you have a little bit of excess cash coming in that you can use to invest. And this is where the third bullet point comes in, which is investing wisely. There are a lot of different ways to think about investing, and I hate that people overcomplicate it. I think for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna keep it as simple as humanly possible. Now, when you invest, you're looking for three things. So minimize risk, maximize cash flow, maximize growth. Those are the three things that you want. If you know absolutely nothing about investing, then one of the worst things you can do is go out and pick random stocks or buy random properties and hope that they make you money. Why is that? Well, see, you have zero competitive advantage. Why do we think if Wall Street, tons of people with tons of data have tons of experience, it, almost inhuman resources, if they can barely outperform the S&P 500 or the index, and they have all that information, they have all that experience, they have all that accountability, then why should we assume that we can do it? Well, this isn't really a hot take, but we shouldn't. We should minimize fees, pick something diverse with a, as little risk as possible, and something that has historically good returns. For this, personally, I like an index fund which is basically a giant bucket that has a little bit of every single stock out there in it. And you can see a bunch of really good index funds out there, but in general, the one I like the most is VTI. Um, VOO is a good one. Basically anything that's Vanguard is good. But remember, I'm not a financial advisor and this is for internet entertainment purposes only. Don't sue me if the stock market crashes. Now, if I were a financial advisor, which I am not, I'd tell you that index funds typically outperform managed funds. In other words, if you're paying someone to make trades for you, they're gonna do worse than if you just put all your money in an index and left it alone. That's because by the time you pay all of their fees, that 1%, that 2%, that 3%, you're actually gonna be earning less. Imagine that. You're paying someone to earn you less money. That sounds incredibly stupid, but a lot of people do it not because they're dumb, just because they're unaware about how the stock market works and how managed funds work and how the fees add up. Now, generally speaking, index funds are lower risk because you're spreading your risk out across 100 stocks. If one company goes bankrupt, you're barely gonna notice. But if they're the only one in your portfolio, you're gonna be feeling the pain. They pay out dividends, which will gradually increase your cash flow over time. If you have one share of VTI, I think you get a buck or two a year in, in dividends. I'm not 100% sure, I, I would need to check on that. But as the company grow and become more valuable, then you're also getting a piece of that growth. So if the stock price goes from $100 to $150, you're getting that as well. So that's the part I truly love about index funds is they're low risk, they give you growth, they give you cash flow. The other part that 
people don't talk about enough with index funds and something that is incredible is they are truly passive. You buy it and you don't have to do anything. I love real estate, but it's a lot of work. I like crypto, but it's a lot of risk. Index funds, get rid of all of that. And I think they're perfect for a beginner investor. Now with that, you know how to set up your financial goals. You cut, cut your spending, boost your income. You understand the basics of investing wisely. Um, we'll get into more complicated stuff later. But for today, thank you for watching. I hope this is helpful and let me know if you learned something new down below. Until next time.